I never expected to be diagnosed with anything other than a recurrence of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Never expected it. So my pattern of CLL is to know that it's there, that it could raise its head again, but like we've talked about this sometimes among patients, whackable, we have effective tools to bop it on its head and then go on with your life. Seventeen years with no treatment, and as you mentioned, I'm sure CLL faded in the back a lot. What got you to realize, oh no, this is something I do need to address again? And and how was it to feel like I have to go to treatment again? One of my friends, Dr. Weird at MD Anderson, had done a test, and he said, you know, it's going to come back sometime. It's going to show up. So I had that in the back of my mind, and then here in San Diego, with monitoring from my doctor here, Dr. Kipps we could see the white blood count go like that. And so it did come back. I wasn't shocked that it happened. And then, okay, it worked before, you know, what do we do now? And so it wasn't the same treatment. It was sort of of more modernized treatment. Uh, And guess what? That was in 2017, we're in 2022. And the CLL has not been a factor after going through those cycles of that treatment. So my pattern of CLL is to know that it's there, that it could raise its head again. But like we've talked about this sometimes among patients, whackable, we have effective tools to bop it on its head and then go on with your life. I think only that you know you're going to get through it. And I think for anybody who's been through cycles of cancer treatment, you know, you're in this tunnel in a way, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's a date when you believe you're going to stop. Uh, You're getting powerful medicines. You understand that. They likely have some side effects. Um, And you just have to get through it. I mean, when I was originally treated, I developed increasingly serious nausea so that if I walked into the clinic, the smell of the clinic made me nauseous, not even having treatment. But you know, there's a goal and the goal is the treatment hopefully will be finite and your disease will be controlled. And that's happened to me a number of times. Thank you for sharing that. Now you mentioned, of course, that in between your treatments for CLL, you were diagnosed again, with something not CLL, uh, another blood cancer, uh, chronic. First of all, how did you even realize it? Because you're already dealing with one. How did you even find out about that? I never expected to be diagnosed with anything other than a recurrence of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Never expected it. I um, would go to the gym with my wife, Esther, early in the morning. And I noticed uh, that I was getting leg pain in my right calf. So the doctor calls and I said, I've got this pain in my leg. He said, well, is your calf red? I said, yeah, it's a little red. Is it warm to the touch? Yes, it is. Do this maneuver with your leg, turn your ankle, do the stretcher. Does that hurt? I said, yes, it does. He said, it's pulled muscle probably. He said, I don't know about that. I said, do you want to come make a house call? No. I want you to go to the emergency room. When? Now. I said, do I need to call an ambulance? No. I said, my wife and kid are asleep. So I snuck out of the house like 1130 at night. I didn't want to wake them. Drive to the hospital. He had called the emergency room. Tell him I was coming. They do an ultrasound. A little while later, the emergency room doctor comes in. He says, congratulations, 
you have a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, a blockage in your right calf. And you also have one higher on your leg on the left side that you don't feel, but it's there. And guess what? You've got pneumonia. And I'm putting you in the hospital now. And I'm hospitalized for this DVT, which you can die from if it goes to your lungs, called a pulmonary embolism. All right. As I'm finishing treatment over a few days, there's a guy who's sitting in a chair in my room. Who are you? He said, I'm a clinical trial coordinator. Yeah. He said, well, we have a trial for a blood thinner to prevent DVTs, recurrence of DVTs. Would you like to be in it? So I thought I'd been in a clinical trial for chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It worked. And now I've got this other thing. I don't know what the hell it is. Maybe that's a good idea. So I sign up. They do all kinds of stuff, EKGs and blood tests and regular visits. You're like a VIP. I love the attention. It's great. And then the principal investigator calls me and he said, you know, something's out of whack with your blood. Not blood thinner stuff. You need to go back to your hematologist here in Seattle. So I did. And he drew 10 tubes of blood. It's a Seattle doctor. He said, I got to talk to you. I said, what? He said, you have a blood cancer. I said, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I've already had that. He said, no. He said, myelofibrosis. What the hell is that? He said, well, it's scarring in your bone marrow. How do you know? He said, well, we did genomic testing and you have the condition that's driven by the gene called JAK2V617F. It's like gobbledygook, right? And therefore we know it's myelofibrosis. I said, what do you do about it? He said, well, nothing right now. Someday you might need a bone marrow transplant. That was scary. And I knew it was fatal, potentially fatal. And that they didn't have a lot to talk about. But I happened to know the doctor who is world famous, who I'd interviewed previously about myelofibrosis, although I didn't know much about it. And he said, come see me in Houston. He was an MD Anderson specialist, world expert. And uh, he said, we've got something to talk about now. And the funny thing was at the same convention, they have exhibits of different drug companies and stuff like that. And there was this little booth for a company that had just gotten approval for the first inhibitor of this Jack v 617 f gene to tamp it down for people with myelofibrosis. Guess what? A few months later, that newly approved drug became my treatment and it was highly effective. Diagnosed with something I never heard of again, stranger in a strange land, and thank God medical science had something to offer, which worked. Well, when you talk about cancer, I wish we could say there's been miraculous progress in every cancer. That's not true. But there's been a lot of progress and it continues. And so I think I'm just a really lucky guy that. The illnesses, the cancers that I've been diagnosed with have been treatable in ever more refined ways as I've lived with them. So thank you, God, that I'm living at a time where there's been progress for what I have. And I think my advice to patients and family members is turn over rocks, not with false hope, not somebody selling you snake oil but with validated, real evidence-based information, is there somebody, something for you that could make a difference and is an example of medical progress for what you have? So job one is to know what you're dealing with. Job two is to have a healthcare team that's knowledgeable in the full range of options. 
And I think job three is to have hope that with the right team, with the right diagnosis, that either now or coming soon, there may be something that can help you. And if that helps you, but peters out, there may be something waiting in the wings to help you even better. That's what's happened with me. I mean, you're someone who has gone through two different diagnoses of two different chronic blood cancers. What is that message to people? I mean, I think a lot of people look to you, they probably have one or the other or a different condition, but they're looking at you and they're like, how, he's done it for so long. How do you know, there's probably not one secret sauce, but what is that message to these people who are watching and reading your story about the arc of what you've been through? Well, I think um, you have to be a proactive patient or it may be you, the patient, it may be your spouse or your adult child or your best friend. I think you have to look for answers, not false answers, not phony answers, but you have to look for real answers and uh, providers who are knowledgeable, okay? And so I'm very grateful that I've been able to do it, but I had to look, I had to push for that. I had to be a consumer. So many people are smart shoppers about buying a house, buying a car, buying a new sweater. Why would, should it be any different if you're facing a life-threatening cancer? You know, you're not a little lamb. You and your family are consumers. So be savvy. And I would say be positive. We're gonna find the right answer. And in the meantime, we've been given time. You have to say, I've been given today. What am I going to do with it? What am I going to do that's positive today? 